Well, I am a first generation American and my family is um, Afro-Caribbean from Jamaica. Um, and I grew up working class in the South, in a suburb outside of Atlanta, and seeing how my family was impacted by immigration policies and seeing, uh, you know, growing up like black and mixed in the South and, and experiencing all of these different identity spaces of race and class and gender and socioeconomic status. I'm also queer um, and a mother of two, like, and I was a young mother. And so all of those experiences really drew my attention to how different my lived experience was than from what I was seeing in news media. And I I felt compelled to tell stories, always. I've always loved storytelling across theater and film and journalism and, uh, and, 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 all the different spaces. So I felt compelled to tell stories, but I felt especially compelled to be a storyteller who was representing the true lived experiences of people, not just through this kind of filter of um, the white gaze, the male gaze, the Western gaze, and the sorts of ideologies that we typically see playing out in mainstream media that purports to be objective, but is not. And in those two decades, I have amassed a lot of different experience in many forms of multimedia storytelling. Uh, as a writer and editor, photographer, copywriter, etc. But also, I have a PhD in communication. So combining that expertise of the sort of like critical understanding of how we communicate, how we fail to communicate, um, you know, understanding media studies and also media production, I apply all of that expertise in service to uh, working with newsrooms, nonprofits, film sets, all of these different organizations and. Uh, media outlets to help them think through the social impact of their storytelling. I think a couple pieces of advice. One is to stay humble. I think we have a tendency to, you know, as humans, we, we might be really good at a particular thing. We might be extremely talented in something. And, but being very talented doesn't automatically mean that you know everything or that you have nothing left to learn, right? So working very hard, taking feedback, you know, taking constructive criticism, applying that, you have to lose your ego, stay humble, and be really open to always learn. So be humble and build your network. You know, build. No one makes it on their own. Like we have this idea that we, you know, like our success is our own, our failures are our own, and that isn't true. We're always in community, we're always in networks, we're always learning from one another, we're, we should always be supporting one another. So build your network far and wide, rely on each other, appreciate each other, acknowledge the support that you get and give support in return, and you know, give props to the people who are helping you up as you help them up. And if you do that, you'll always have a successful career. I think that journalism and news media specifically is an integral tool for democracy. Without understanding a wide swath of uh, lived experiences of you know what is happening in Oregon, in Mali, in Jamaica, in Cuba, in Colombia, like we need to know how people are living their lives, what are they struggling with, what are what are their successes, you know, what are what are their joys? What is it like to be a person who lives in this place? What is it like to experience, you know, this climate disaster halfway around the world for me? In order for me to truly understand my humanity, what it means for me to be in this world and you know, on this campus right here in this moment in Los Angeles, I have to constantly be assessing myself in relationship to the rest of the world. And that's what journalism does or should do for us. It helps us place ourselves in, in the social fabric of a global humanity. Well, you know, one of the wonderful things about being a professor, which is why I pursued this career, is that we're encouraged as faculty to continue working in the industries that we study, right? Like I, I want to know what's happening in journalism in order to accurately teach my students how to enter that field. 
So if my last journalism job was 15 years ago, how can I help you actually know how, what it means to be a journalist today? So maintaining my freelance career is important and teaching of course always comes first because this is my main focus is being a professor. Um, but I love the opportunity to be able to work on projects and to take on some freelance um, opportunities when they come about, right? And so it's you know kind of like the full-time work of being a professor and then the part-time work of freelancing and consulting and things like that. I would say that I love the library here. I really love LMU's library. It's one of my favorite libraries I've ever been in. It just ha it's so beautiful and it's just like such good vibes and I love this the um, the special collections and archives. Well, I've seen some really cool stuff there and been able to expose my classes to some of the wonderful archives in our collection. So